drawn from a collection of testimonies given by Istrians in that tension-filled post-war environment. Istrians reported their stories of harassment and flight to the National Liberation Committee of Istria, which had begun organizing immediately after the war uh, to lobby for Italian control over the region. The committee's entire collection consists of 900 documents, the most important of which for my purposes are the 234 direct testimonies gathered from April 1948 to November of 1954. Then in 2003, I spent seven months at an archive at the Regional Institute for Istrian Culture in Trieste, where I created a catalog of all of the post war testimonies. Each testimony begins with a set piece of standard information, including the names and the professions of the testifiers, where they were from, the date that they left history of, whether they left with um, official documents or more clandestinely. And then this information is followed by a narrative of varying lengths. Um, earlier ones are sort of fairly brief, while later ones become richer in detail and usually provide some sort of context for uh, the report, for their report of leaving. I then selected a sample of these later testimonies from speakers who came from Chitanova. And in 2004, I spent nine excruciatingly long months tracking down some of the original testifiers, most of whom are now into their 70s and 80s. Um, so when I couldn't find the actual speakers, some have since died or, or moved away, I found their relatives, their, their wives, their brothers, their cousins, their children. Once I finally found them, I, I conducted interviews with them about their family's past. So for every 1950s interview or testimony uh, in my data set, I have two companion interviews. One in um, 2004 Croatia with a Croatian relative, one in 2004 uh, Italy with an Italian relative. The interviews were all taped and were conducted in Italian, and I'll show how I coded the transcripts in just a minute while discussing the network applications. So I focus on a typical town in Zone B called Cittanova in Italian and Novigra in Croatian. Uh, Cittanova is located in the northwestern Istrian coast. It's had a sort of steady population of about 2,500 people for the past 100 years. As a result of sporadic post war violence and uncertainty about the future in Yugoslavia, by 1956, so it's like a little brief period, but population collapses and it sort of expands back up again. So by 1956, nearly 95% of the town's population had fled over the border uh, from Zone B to Zone A. Soon after, Bosnians, Montenegrins, and other Slavs moved in to replace those who had left. But by focusing on a specific location such as Chitanova, I'm able to capture the various networks of social relations before and after the Second World War. <coughs> the range of stories that people tell map directly onto these groupings of social relations. As some Istrians move across the border from Yugoslavia to Italy, they take their stories with them. And the institutions of two separate states then take these raw materials of individual narratives and shape them into collective accounts. The differences then in my interviews in 2004 reflect these income, uh, outcomes of the very different state processes in different state institutional settings. So what is a narrative network? I've been throwing this word around a little bit. Well, I think it's always best to start with just absolutely basic definitions and work our way up. So you can all agree a narrative is an account with a beginning, a middle, and an end in which some condition has changed um, throughout the course of the story. It's composed of chains of events that through their implotment in some temporal order imply causality. So um, we start from a sort of incredibly simple notion that what we get when we read or we listen to a narrative is a chain of events that appears like a progression from event A to event B to event C and so on. If you ask someone in Chitanova today to tell you the sort of history of their town, you typically hear something like, well, we were really poor and we hardly had enough to eat under fascism, point A. And then the partisans came and liberated us, point B. And after that, life kind of became pretty good, point C. Well, although we read or listen to stories as if they progress like this from point A to point B to point C, of course, the story is really being told retrospectively. We start with C, and we work our way back. And we have far more events that we could ever mobilize for any given story. So we need to select events that best make the point that we're trying to get across. Basically, what we have are stories of ends under a theory of selection that produces the middles and the beginnings. And we can see these kinds of choices as relations among events that are complementary. In the series, uh, of events at the top of the screen. If G is the act of leaving Chitanova, 
You can employ events like being interrogated by the local police, or saying that your child was forced to attend a Croatian language school to sort of explain why you felt compelled to leave Chitanova. Um, you can make either of these two pathways, they're transposable, so you can use either of them to make the same point. Um, telling a story that moves from event A to event F, on the other hand, opens up a variety of event options that potentially takes the narrative in radically different directions. The links create layers of meaning for event F. In the story of Giuseppe Warin, for example, F could be events of the foibe. The foibe is then connected to the Holocaust, the foibe um, leads to Exodus, and the foibe is invoked to make all Slavs guilty. So this grouping of all possible events with their associated relations um, within a collection of accounts is what I call the narrative network. But the tricky thing about using narrative data, spoken narrative data, is that your narrators never tell you when they're employing events like F or D or E, these sort of densely connected events. Their narratives, when they say them, often look much more like the parsimonious A to B to C. It's only when you pull all the narratives together and you stack up the stories upon each other that you can see relations like this among the story events. And an important implication of this insight is that some, some events tend to be central to the network, whereas others are more peripheral, and that the centrality or peripherality arises from patterns across narratives that are produced through the institutionalization of narrative.